Hello again, friends of poetry. This is Jim Ranson with another edition of a show called Morning Jim Poetry, designed, I hope, for those of you who like variety. And today I'm going to break one of my own rules, so we'll have a little more variety than usual. And one of the rules was to keep the poems short. But today we're going to have Robert and Elizabeth Barrett Browning as our poets. And the wife, Elizabeth Barrett, is not much of a problem. She wrote a lot of sonnets, but Robert Browning is mainly noted for his dramatic monologues, and we can't really have a good session of Robert Browning without one of those, and they are lengthy, so I apologize. Rather lengthy. So what to do? Today I'm going to go ahead with one of his long poems, and I have to say one of my own favorites, The Bishop Orders His Tomb at St. Praxed's Church. But we're going to start with one of the most famous of all the poems of the Victorian era, which was by Elizabeth Barrett, and it's um, called How Do I Love Thee. We'll try to get back to her next week, but let's just start out with this one. How Do I Love Thee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. When feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with a breath, smiles, tears of all my life, and if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Well, that's a very emotional poem. Elizabeth Barrett was about ready to be selected for Port Laureate of England. In those days, that would have been a real breakthrough for a woman. But at the last minute, the honor went to Alfred Tennyson. I wonder how today's feminists would have tolerated that. Probably not at all. Elizabeth Barrett was a great poet, and we may hear more from her next week. But today, um, we're going to read a lengthy poem by Robert Browning. It's one of his dramatic monologues. The Bishop Orders His Tomb at St. Praxed's Church. And you have to envision the scene. We're on, we're at the side of his deathbed and he's being surrounded by his sons who he claimed in life were his nephews, of course. But he's not claiming that at this stage of the game. And he is desperately wanting to instruct them how his tomb should be constructed. The Bishop Orders His Tomb at St. Braxid's Church by Robert Browning. Vanity, saith the preacher, vanity, draw round my bed. Is Anselm keeping back? Nephews, sons mine. Ah, God, I know not. Well, 
<laughs> she men would have to be your mother once. Old Gandalf envied me, so fair she was. What's done is done, and she is dead beside, dead long ago, and I am bishop since. And as she died, so must we die ourselves, and thence ye may perceive the world's a dream. Life. <laughs> How and what is it? And here I lie in this state chamber, dying by degrees. Hours and long hours in the dead night, I ask, Do I live? Am I dead? Peace. Peace seems all. St. Praxed's ever was the church for peace. And so, about this tomb of mine, I fought with tooth and nail to save my niche, you know. Old Gandalf cozened me despite my care. Shrewd was that snatch from out the corner south he graced his carrion with, despite my care. <sighs> God cursed the same. Yet still my niche is not so cramped, but thence one sees the pulpit or the epistle side, and somewhat of the choir, those silent seats, and up into the airy dome where live the angels, and a sunbeam sure to lurk, and I shall fill my slab of basalt there, and neath my tabernacle take my rest. With those Nine columns around me, two and two. The odd one at my feet where Anselm stands. Peach blossom marble all, the rare, the ripe, as fresh poured red wine of a mighty pulse. Old Gandalf with his paltry onion stone. Put me where I may look at him. True peach. Rosy and flawless, how I earned the prize. Draw close, that conflagration of my church, what then? So much was saved, if aught were missed. <sighs> my sons, ye would not be my death. Go dig the white grape vineyard where the oil press stood. Drop water gently till the surface sink and if ye find, ah, God, I know not, I bedded in store of rotten fig leaves soft and corded up in a tight olive, frail, some lump. Ah, God of lapis lazuli, big as a Jew's head cut off at the nape, blue as a vein o'er the Madonna's breast, Sons, all have I bequeathed you, villas, all. That brave Frascati villa with its bath. So let the blue lump poise between my knees, like God the Father's globe, on both his hands he worship in the Jesu church so gay, for Gandalf shall not choose but see and burst. Uh, swift as a weaver's shuttle, fleet are years. Man goeth to the grave, and where is he? <laughs> uh, did I say basalt for my slab, sons? Black. T'was ever antique black I meant. How else shall ye contrast my frieze to come beneath? The bas-relief in bronze ye promised me, those pans and nymphs ye wot of, and perchance some tripod tersus, <sighs> with a vase or so, the Savior at his Sermon on the Mount, sent Praxed in a glory, and one pan ready to twitch, twitch, <laughs>
the nymph slash garment off. And Moses with the tables. <laughs> but I know ye mark me not. What do they whisper thee, child of my balls, Anselm? Ah, ye hope to revel down my villas while I gasp bricked over with beggar's moldy travertine, which Gandalf from his tomb top chuckles at. Nay, boys, ye love me. All of Jasper, then. Tis Jasper ye stand pledged to, lest I grieve. My boss must needs be left behind, alas. But to one block, pure green as a pistachio nut, there's plenty jasper somewhere in the world, and have I not St. Praxed's ear to pray horses for ye? And brown and Greek manuscripts and mistresses with great smooth marbly limbs. That's if ye carve my epitaph aright. Choice Latin picked phrase, Tully's every word. No gaudy were like Gandalf's second line. Tully, my masters. Ulpian serves his need. And then, how shall I lie through centuries and hear the blessed mutter of the mast? And see God made and eaten all day long. And feel the steady candle flame and taste good, strong, thick stupefying incense smoke. For as I lie here, hours of the dead night dying in state, and by such slow degrees, I fold my arms as if they clasped a crook, and stretch my feet forth straight as stone can point, and let the bedclothes for a mort cloth drop into great lamps and folds of sculptor's work, and as yon tapers dwindle and strange thoughts grow with a certain humming in my ears about the life before I live this life, and this life too, popes, cardinals, and priests, St. Praxed at his Sermon on the Mount, your tall, pale mother with her talking eyes, and new-found agate urns as fresh as day. And marble's language, Latin, pure, discreet, Aha, Alucisabat, quoth our friend. <laughs> no Tully, said I, Opian at the best. Evil and brief hath been my pilgrimage. All Lapis, all sons, else I give the Pope my villas. Will ye ever eat my heart? Ever your eyes were as lizards quick. They glitter like your mother's for my soul, or ye would heighten my impoverished freeze, piece out its starved design, and fill my vase with grapes, and add a visor and a term, and to the tripod ye would tie a lynx that in his struggle throws the tersus down to comfort me in my entablature where I am to lie till I must ask, till I must ask, do I live? Am I dead? There, there, leave me. For ye have stabbed me with ingratitude to death. Ye wish it. God, ye wish it. Stone, grit stone a crumble. Clammy squares with sweaters at the corpse they keep oozing through. And no more lapis to delight the world. Well go. I bless ye. Fewer tapers there but in a row, and going, turn your backs. I, like 
departing altar ministrants and leave me in my church. Leave me in my church, the church for peace, that I may watch at leisure if he leers old Gandalf at me <laughs> from his onion stone. I still he envied me so fair she was. <laughs>